Parenthood. New episodes drop every Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Here's a sample of Laura Dockrell's Zombie Mom. You were the only person really that told me how hard it was actually when I was about to have Jet, you did say that, that it's really hard and I remember really valuing that because I think your natural setting as a human is like buoyant and upbeat that when you told me it's hard, I was like, okay, this is real talk. I had no idea that you had gone through so much. And it was so worth it, so worth it that I'm doing it again. I know, so you're doing it all again. And this time round, you're... I'm just so amazed and proud you're documenting and you're writing these accounts. I think it's really cool you're kind of drawing these boundaries between you and the rest of the world being like, I think you said it's not neat, you know, I'm not a neat pregnant person. It's like you're kind of giving yourself permission going back off, this is my space and I'm going to do it. But also you're saving so many people as well doing this in the public eye. How do you think pregnant women are treated in the kind of public eye, or women in general, pregnant person, what is the expectations and pressures put on us? There aren't that many people in the public eye who are pregnant in front of the camera. And I don't feel like, for me, it's ideal because it's not comfortable. For example, the other day I was on Jonathan Ross wearing a glittery cat suit and I was like, I can't cross my legs. I, it's so <laughs> uncomfortable. But I literally can't sit with my legs open in front of the camera that's pointed straight at me. So it was like really uncomfortable. And I would say that just in general, like people have this sort of weird thing with pregnant women, which is like a contrast between like a molly coddling of them physically. Like, don't lift that, don't lift mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And all of that versus this lack of true understanding of like what you actually need like I'm happy to carry a bag I understand why not many women do it in the public eye and I'm doing it not because I want to make a point I'm doing it because it just happens to coincide with when I'd planned to put my record out and just like a lot of working women even though it's a very different sort of set of circumstances you know, if you go to work and you get pregnant, you just work at the same time. And I just think I want to sort of normalise it in the sense of um, being a famous person. I think people in the public eye often hide away for it. And I did the first time. And I'm glad I did the first time because it was, I didn't know what to expect and it was scary. It feels like we have like a get on with it attitude where and especially, yeah. you know, if you're working as well, as you just said, and I actually love that. I didn't even think about it. It's so obvious. Like, why shouldn't you know if a woman's still got to, she works in a bank or she works in a school, she's a doctor, she still has to go to work. So why should you preserve yourself and hide like the most natural thing that you do? But also spinning plates, you know, it's like you can't stop working you're the one that puts food on the table and yeah. also I feel like that's so much of our identity as well isn't it like I noticed that I started to recover and feel better not even just from my illness but as what happened as a mum when I started working yeah same and actually now I'm raising my daughter to know that that's what makes mummy happy like when she says why do you have to go to work so that we can have food on the table. I say, <laughs> I say, like, so that there's food, the light switch goes on and off, clothes, toys, and the best bit is it makes me happy. That is and amazing. I think that's so important so for her to know that, like, work doesn't need to just be about finances. That's already an education from the beginning, isn't it? It's visibility. You're not showing this is mummies can sometimes do this and daddies can do this. It's there. Mm. And yeah. it's the life that we live. Totally. So you're pregnant again. How yes. do you feel? Well, it's interesting because I'm so happy about having another baby because my first baby is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. But I do think I've got post-traumatic stress disorder a bit with it. Like recently I went to scan and they said that I've got this thing called placenta previa, which is where the placenta sort of sits over the cervix the doctor said like it means that if it doesn't go up which more often than not apparently it does but if it doesn't it means that there's a big risk of excessive bleeding and she was like oh don't worry we have loads of blood in the room and it was like a normal mind would be like 
okay, great, I'm in good hands. But my thing was just like, I didn't react not like a normal person because I think I still haven't fully recovered from the trauma of the first one and what happened. And now I sort of feel more scared because I've got my daughter that's already on this earth that I care about so much and I I just went into this weird thing of like I was just worried for days that I was going to die and I was like reacting like somebody who'd been told they were going to die and then but then like everyone's like first of all nine out of ten placentas go back up again and also like a lot of people have it and have the operation and it's all fine like and I was just like convinced I was and I was crying all the time and I was really depressed and sort of angry at myself for wanting another child almost for putting myself in jeopardy when I feel so responsible for my child that I've got already I'm more worried than I was the first pregnancy because of what happened with the first one. Do you kind of feel like, how did you not know? How did nobody tell you that you could feel that bad from just having a baby? There's not really our illnesses exposed. Yeah, like there's no truth about it. And also a lot of people say postpartum depression, but they don't really tell you what that means. And as somebody like yourself, who's always been quite an optimist and sort of like the go-to person, for a lot of people to make them feel buoyant and lift them up. I'd never really experienced that level of sadness before and it was quite alien to me to feel that way. So now I'm sort of like caught between an overwhelming sense of joy that I'll be able to do it again and that maybe I'll be able to rectify some of the mistakes I made before. I'm going to try not to doubt my relationship with my child or be so insecure about it so that I can then accept help from other people and I think last time I just tried to do everything by myself and it was too much and going on tour with a baby of seven months and I just was like a mess I was like on stage in like a poppy outfit lactating I was crying on stage I remember you saying uh, and I know this is horrible because it's your like misery moment but for me you saying that it made me feel so much less broken myself like I was just like god it isn't just me but you've got that image where you were like standing on stage singing with tears just streaming down your face that's what women are facing that's what they're doing aren't they I just did it because I'd sold all those tickets I remember on stage at the O2 and I was like saying to however many people fill the O2 it was like 18 20,000 people and I was like I'm just gonna text the girl that's looking after the baby just to see if <laughs> and I stopped my gig to do a text is she asleep I love that <laughs> But it's true, you wouldn't be able to sing, but you wouldn't be able to. If I was like, I just need to know, because all I'm thinking about is that, and I can't remember the lyrics. And everyone thought it was like a bit of a stand-up and laughing, but it wasn't, it was genuine. It's like the umbilical cord has never been cut, isn't it? It's like you can't fully move on to the next thing until you know they're okay yeah. and they're at peace. 